to fly. To be able to see the view from their perspective, there's such a soul-searching attitude to them. They're the toughest birds you'll ever find. They are what makes this area what it is. The ecosystem is perfect here for the densest population of birds of prey in North America. Golden Eagle monitoring in the Snake River Canyon started around 1971. We start with an occupancy survey to see which territories are occupied. About a month later, we'll come and see how many nestlings are in each of the occupied nests. We follow up with a last check of nestlings. The geology of it, the way that everything was formed was so perfect an ecosystem that they came here. The most important feature, of course, is the canyon itself, where the cliffs are magnificent, high, an ideal place for nesting raptors. And then the bench lands above, those soils provide ideal conditions for burrowing rodents. We think of the canyon as the bedroom and these uplands as the pantry where they forage. Shrubs are foundational to the habitats at the NCA. Sagebrush in particular draws deep soil moisture up to the surface and traps snow. And then forbs and grasses can utilize that water. And so if you want to have all the other species, all the other components like your grasses and wildflowers, you need to start with your shrubs. Sagebrush provides the structure for this ecosystem. It provides food for wildlife. It provides habitat. The real driving factor for why we have such high densities of raptors in this area is because of the amount of prey species, such as Paiute ground squirrels, and reptiles, so snakes, lizards, as well as other small mammals. The ground squirrel we have out here is called the Paiute ground squirrel. It's relatively small bodied. They have an average lifespan of about three to five years. They're endemic to this area and are only above ground from late January. And then once it starts getting hot, they stay underground pretty much for the rest of the year. So they actually have to emerge from their burrows, find a mate, mate, raise their young, and then put on enough weight that they can survive the rest of the season. The reason why we have the density and diversity of raptors we have here is because of the density of prey. The Golden Eagle Monitoring Program represents one of the world's most comprehensive and longest monitoring data sets for breeding eagles. A lot of what we know about Golden Eagle ecology has come from studies conducted in the NCA. We're going into a golden eagle nest to look for Mexican chicken bug infestations and then also avian trichomoniasis, this disease that can cause nestling death. Golden eagles are at the top of the food chain. They're a generalist species, so they take a lot of different prey items, but here in the NCA they specialize in black-tailed jackrabbits. Most goldens live between 30 to 45 years in the wild if everything goes good. Of course, they ride the thermals like everybody sees, you know, you're floating around. But when they do come into a stoop or a dive to catch their prey, their top speed is almost 200 miles an hour. There's more power in those talent than there is in the pit bull's jaws. The name burrowing owl is a little bit of a misnomer because at least the birds out here in the western United States don't dig their own burrows. They typically nest in burrows dug by other mammals. There aren't any other owls that nest underground. They're a migratory species, so they have to survive the journey between Idaho and Mexico every year. They lay a large clutch of 12 eggs, which is very unique for a predatory bird. 
They'll eat everything from small mammals, rodents, down to invertebrates. They're kind of tall and slender. They hover when they fly and they occupy these open areas. Ferruginous hawks are one of the largest hawks. They're adapted to these high country environments where the heat is relentless. They have got these huge buccal cavities, so when they want to release some of their inner body heat, they can just open up their mouth. It's a big part of the reason that they're able to survive out here. It's what they're adapted to do. They're incredibly aggressive against potential nest predators, and primarily during this part of the year, hunt ground squirrels. So right around the time that the youngsters are fledging, the birds will go north into Montana or Alberta, where the ground squirrels are still up. They're big movers, and they follow these squirrels. They seem to prefer them. You're going to see more prairie falcons here along the Snake River than you will anywhere else in the world. Falcons are not as big of nest builders as some of the other birds of prey. And so they literally just dig down into the dirt and the rocks that are on a cliff ledge. And that's where they'll lay their eggs. And then once the chicks hatch, after they have grown in their first set of feathers, the parents start both going out to collect food because there's a lot of mouths to feed and it requires a lot of food. They're fast like a peregrine, but they've sacrificed some of their speed for size. And because of that, they can hit harder. They really can knock prey out of the sky. The NCAA supports breeding habitat for about 16 different sorts of raptors. On any given year, up to 700 breeding pairs of birds have been known to nest in this area. It's one of the densest breeding populations of raptors in the world. Nature has put together one of the most unbelievable areas in the world for birds of prey. And in that perfection, we had to protect it. Protects the birds, pre-existing uses, and provides this legacy for America to have for the rest of time.